Hey, hello, traders. It's Tuesday, December 13th. This is John Kickletter, Chief Strategist for DailyFX.com, here to give you a market wrap of the opening 24 hours of trade this week, and more importantly, an outlook for what we can expect in these next 24 to 48 hours ahead. Well, what we can expect is volatility, uh, in short, because we could already see in market conditions this past session that uh, things were starting to get a little topsy-turvy. Uh, so we'll keep it relatively short today because a lot of what we're looking at is anticipation. Not a lot of reaction uh, to known event risk, but instead the full-fledged focus on what lies ahead and untangling it can go many different ways. And ultimately it's up to the market to decide what is most important uh, because we will have to essentially prioritize what the expectations are uh, and since we've had enough time here on the risk disclaimer let's just get into talking about it okay so the first thing we're going to look at is the s p 500 today now i'm going to point out a couple of things uh, and why i think the market conditions are so unusual uh, we did have a fairly hearty 1.4 percent rally got us slightly above the 50-day moving average or sorry the 20-day moving average you see here in green and Ultimately, it's a little bit more traction. I think that traction actually was fundamentally inspired, uh, and it was inspired by inflation statistics. The Survey of Consumer Expectations from the New York Fed uh, was released for the month of November, and that SCE report gave us, amongst other things, I mean, there are expectations of household income growth expectations. That's pretty good. Uh, and household spending growth expectations, moderating, but still very hearty. But most of what our interests are this week tend to uh, focus on monetary policy, in particular, the FOMC rate decision, which is on Wednesday. A lot of speculation has gone into that. And this is, in, in essence, the inflation forecast, not necessarily the inflation as it actually happened in the past month. This is what consumers expect. And this is why sur sentiment surveys are so closely observed, because how those expectations uh, play can often lead to those outcomes. So we pay a lot of attention to it, whether it be consumer, business, investor expectations, that is data to watch. So the fact that we had a drop in the median um, from a 5.9 to 5.2 reading from October to November, a 0.7 percentage point drop, which is actually the biggest, I think, in the survey series. Uh, the series doesn't go back all that far, but still a remarkable decline. And it, it tees up expectations for the top event risk, perhaps for for Tuesday. And Tuesday's top event risk, amid a lot of other event risk, is the US CPI. Now, we had a lot of discussion about this last week. Do we pay more attention to the CPI? Because if you look back, I mean, you don't have to look back very far to get the uh, reference of why it was so remarkably market moving. Uh, there it is. Uh, the impact of the, uh, the November the 10th release was difficult to miss. You can see here, actually, on the uh, Thursday rally that uh, CPI release was what urged the S&P 500 to break its narrow range, clear the midpoint of its August to October range. It was also a remarkable move and really a pivot, uh, though consensus remains out and to be fulfilled, but it was a pivot for the 2022 bull trend for the dollar index. You could say it was uh, waning, and it certainly was up until that break, but it did break lower. So a very, very important piece of data. And now we have either a historical context, recent historical context, or we have the, it's one indicator versus another indicator. Anticipation is a strong force, very strong force, as we talked about a lot over the past months. Uh, but is there enough here? Well, it is so intensely debated, I think, within the market's uh, perspective that it was enough to urge the S&P 500 to that 1.4% rally so that the consumer inflation expectations were significantly eased, kind of a, a reinforcement of other data that we didn't see actually garner traction. Non-farm payrolls last week, the producer price index last week, those were important readings. And yet the market went nowhere because it wasn't inspirational enough. So 
maybe the collective uh, picture is starting to inspire some uh, some encouragement. But this is where things get really weird uh, in the markets, and I think it unnerved a lot of people. On the same day that we had this S and P 500 rally, we also had the VIX charge higher. Now, this is no small ebb. Uh, or waxing of the uh, the volatility index, the so-called fear index. This is an incredible jump. This is over 9%. It's actually almost 10% uh, rally back up to the 25 handle. Now, I don't usually look at percentage change in uh, measures that are essentially percentage-based, uh, but it is remarkable the context of the scale of movement between the VIX and the S&P 500, because historically, these are inversely related. So if I were to put the VIX, we'll put it on a new scale, okay? Make it red so you can see it a little bit better here. If I put it on this scale, and if I were to also invert it, make those regular so you can see the price, but invert that scale. It's a very strong correlation, right? So it's a very strong negative correlation, normally speaking. And yet, we have this distinct positive correlation this past session, which defies those normal relationships. And the scale is of substance. So I, I decided to look to see, when's the last time we had a rally of this magnitude for the S&P 500 and a rally of that magnitude on the, of, from the VIX on the same day? Last time I could find was back here on May 5th, 1997. So it's extraordinarily unusual. And I even did it as just a maybe a, a more moderate 5% uh, jump. And there were some instances back here during the pandemic, the post-pandemic recovery rally, which things got a little topsy-turvy too. That was the rise of meme stock, rise and I guess re-rise of the crypto to the moon uh, phase. And then before that, you have to go back again to 1997. So this is extraordinarily unusual, but you can understand why some of this uncertainty the expectations of volatility. And I have to remind you that the VIX volatility index is for a 30-day period. It, it, it looks at volatility expectations for 30 days out. Um, so it's encompassing of that period. There used to be the, actually still might exist, but the uh, CBOE's uh, VXST, the short-term volatility index, was a one-week tenor, uh, which would be more, I think, appropriate for this combination, this focus on an imminent event risk. Uh, but nevertheless, it's very statistically unusual to see this. And I do think that you can't take this for directionality. I don't think the VIX or the S&P 500 is inherently, quote unquote, right on direction. But it does suggest that these markets are not just going to be lost in the uh, expectations and the forward looking and the anticipatory uh, quiet. I think we could, could be in for some volatility, even from the release of the CPI, even though after that, you have the FOMC. So if that's the, the perspective of the market, I'm also going to be watching it for the dollar-based majors. So we've worked ourselves into a very narrow range below 106. Uh, to the downside, you have about 104.50 for the euro USD. Uh, one of the benchmark pairs and arguably one of the most liquid assets in the world. Pound dollar, very much the same thing. 123 down to eh, approximately this uh, 121 level. Um, dollar yen, uh, pressuring the top end of its uh recent range, which is the former supporters new resistance, 137.50 to the downside, the 200-day moving average. So a lot of congestion, a lot of potency, and a lot of potential. Now, I know I'm focusing largely on the U.S. There is a lot of other event risks. This past session, we also had Japanese business sentiment, uh, which uh, deteriorated. Uh, U.K. data, which was slightly better, but still uh, not favorable. Uh, and in the upcoming session, we're still going to have a lot of, uh, actually, the new loans came out on Monday. Uh, but a lot of external uh, alternative country event risk. But I do think that it's going to ultimately get most of its global perspective from the CPI in anticipation of the FOMC. So it's important to prioritize where this goes. Doesn't mean that you shouldn't look at pairs like Euro pound or pound yen or even some of the Aussie crosses. Aussie Kiwi is very interesting. I know it's an unusual one, but it's very interesting, uh, technically speaking. Uh, you should look at these areas. But if you're looking for pure volatility potential, you got to focus in on the uh, U.S. markets and the U.S. top-level event risk, because clearly the market itself is. 
All right, we'll wrap it up here. We'll do a rundown of the CPI outcome and full uh, breakdown of the FOMC decision tomorrow. Until then, I wish you all good luck trading out there.